Hello and welcome back to another video. Uh, this one is another race report. It is from Cambridge Sports Lake Standard Distance Triathlon or Olympic Distance Triathlon. I did manage to get the win. This was following a week from my first ever triathlon win, which was in a middle distance triathlon, which I'll link up here somewhere, which if you didn't watch um, the race review of that, yeah, took the win. So yeah, I'm gonna try and keep this relatively short and quick. Um, don't wanna go into too much detail on this one. Let's get started. So like I say, standard distance triathlon or Olympic distance, which meant that the swim, usually it's 1500 meters. They said that this course was 1600 meters, which would have been a mile. Ended up being nowhere near that, but I'm gonna get onto that. It was a big mess to swim. It was slightly later start than usual, which was nice. Usually they start at like six in the morning or something. This was, I think, 8.30, which meant it was quite nice because it was a later start and it was a fairly local, it was only about an hour away. Decided I didn't need to stay over on the night, which was partly the reason I booked this. Other reason actually was that a friend at work named Craig uh, was doing the event. He let me know about it and I thought I would put in a last minute entry and go, go give it a go basically. So yeah, got up at uh, five, um, left at like six, got there um, with my dad at about seven, 7.30ish, paid parking, whatever. Got transition and everything all set up, collect race number, had a quick look at the course. Uh, the venue itself is lovely, like it's in a almost like a country park but that made it really, really nice. The swim as well was sort of up and down uh, a lake. It was basically, the swim was meant to be a four lap course of, of this lake. Um, you basically go up and down between two blue buoys three times, and then on your last one, you go back up to the top buoy, come back down and exit just slightly to the left, I suppose, of the course. Um, if you're facing that way, so so I made a really big mistake on this. It was a mass start, so we all set off. There was a guy that led the swim out in front of me. Um, he was a couple of seconds ahead. I sort of just tried to stay with him a little bit. He was swimming quite well. I was counting laps because I knew that obviously previously, like I said, at my last triathlon, I miscounted the bike laps. So I was, I was really trying to make an effort to count laps. I got onto the third loop of the swim, and and basically. I then knew that I had one more loop to exit. I checked my watch and in the swim because I didn't want to mess it up and I didn't want to cut the course short and I didn't want to make it too long. And I wanted to make sure I knew where I was. And obviously they said that this course was 1600 meters. So I checked my watch and it said that I was, yeah, basically a lap off. So I thought that doesn't seem right. If I had have finished where they, which basically was where you were meant to finish. So after four loops, it would have only been a 1300 meter swim, which is miles off. So I assumed that you'd, that I'd miscounted um, and I needed to do another lap which would have made it 1600 meters. The guy that was ahead of me um, that was leading out the swim, he clearly thought and did the exact same thing. So he went and did another loop. I followed him because I was like, my watch is saying I've done 1300 meters. He's doing the same thing. So I must have just miscounted. Long story short, I didn't miscount. We both ended up doing an extra lap of the swim. Um, we were coming out with people in front of us, but we were definitely way ahead on the swim. So we were basically, and we had a little chat and we, we got confused about it. A little bit annoying, meant I probably lost, I don't know, four or five minutes in the swim. So yeah, I did a lot longer. Ended up with a time of 28 minutes and 24 seconds for just over a mile, I think. I felt like my swimming technique was really good, actually. It felt like I was swimming fairly easy and still going at a decent pace. My pace here says I did a 134 per 100 yards. I got a feeling that that might have been a GPS error because I feel like I was swimming some of the best swimming I've ever done. Uh, one thing to note on this actually, something that I tried which was a last minute decision which actually I think worked really well. I think where in some previous swims I've, I've I felt really restricted and like I've, I've always said, my shoulders blow up really fast in them swims. I think the reason is because I felt restricted in my chest which meant that I was just it, it all threw me off being in a wetsuit and I've always said that I think it's because I don't practice in a tri suit in a wetsuit but I have been doing that a little bit and and basically what I did was I unzipped my tri suit and swam with it unzipped and that meant that I could open up my chest a lot more and I think it was actually a breathing issue I had I think I weren't able to breathe there very well my tri suit's really quite tight as well so I think that helped massively and I never felt out of breath or exhausted and my shoulders they obviously felt sore but they didn't feel like they're blown up and I couldn't do much more in the swim. So that, I think I'll definitely stick with that in the future. Then transition was a really long transition. It was like maybe a few hundred meters or a couple of hundred meters. You had to run from the lake to where transition was. So that took a, a bit of a while. Had an okay 
T1, nothing really to note. It was, yeah, I mean, it went pretty smoothly. Got my bike, got out, and then again, from transition to the, the mount line on the bike was another few hundred, couple of hundred meters, so you were running for ages with your bike which was a little bit annoying, but I mean, it is what it is, isn't it? It's not, everyone has to do it, so it's not too bad. And then onto the bike, I was with the guy that was swimming just ahead of me. He was a strong cyclist. He went flying off quite quickly, took a couple of seconds. I was a little bit behind him, and then I sort of stayed behind him for a little bit on the bike. And then I felt like I was a little bit annoyed, to be honest, that I had done the extra lap on the swim, and I knew there was people ahead of me. And my aim going into this was to bike to the front of the race as quickly as possible and then just try and stay at the front of the race, basically. And so I was hoping by this point, I mean, I should have been second. I was There was maybe another eight to ten people in front of me where they'd done the actual swim distance or, or not the actual swim distance, but the actual laps. And I obviously done the extra. So I knew there was going to be guys ahead. So my plan, stick behind him for a little bit. And then within maybe like a mile or two, I basically just dropped the hammer on the bike and I just, I went for it. And then I think by, by maybe eight miles, I was at the front of the race. Um, and then by like 10 miles, I looked back and I couldn't see anyone. So I knew that I was a good, a good at least minute or so um, ahead of the race. Then got to the turnaround point. There's an out and back course, got to the turnaround, maybe turnaround point at about 12 and a half miles, turned around. Um, and that's when I realized I had a pretty decent gap I sort of eased off just a little bit. I think up until that point, I was averaging about 280 watts, which is, you know, pretty good. I'm happy with that. The second half, about, I think it was 270 watts, got into within a, like a couple of miles of the, the finish. And I, there's some like longer stretches of road um, where you're able to see like quite far behind. And I, I couldn't see basically anyone behind me for it, it would have been at least a couple of minutes, I'd say. Did get stuck behind a bit of traffic and stuff coming back into T1, which was a little bit frustrating. I got stuck behind it. I can't remember if it was a learner or a car going really slow, but they were they were going slow, like 20 miles an hour. And obviously I was averaging a, a lot hard, like faster than that. So a little bit annoying getting stuck there, but you know, is what it is. Um, I think I ended up averaging over the whole, whole distance, which was ended up being 25.5 miles about 270 with a normalized of around 280 i think it's a pretty good numbers ended up with a time of one hour and well one hour on the dot and like 58 milliseconds or something so literally an hour on the dot yeah for 25.5 miles which i'm happy about averaging 25.1 miles an hour so super happy with that um riding felt strong obviously come off the bike and you've got to do that long run again back into t2 so um yeah did that had loads of people cheering actually it's a really great venue because the the where you where you run with part of the run course as well but where you run into transition there's just there's like people because it's a country park there's a lot of people there spectating so a lot of people cheering as you come in it felt quite nice being the first one into t uh, two as well i've not had that yet so that was really cool wrapped my bike up um got socks on got shoes on i'm never really that smooth with doing that so weren't the fastest i'll be honest but then got out onto the run and my legs felt, they felt they felt like they do coming off the bike of a 70.3, which I, I thought they would be a little bit fresher, but, but I think where I pushed quite a bit more power, they were, they were, they were pretty heavy to be honest and pretty fatigued. So I thought, considering that, I thought I would take the first mile at a 70.3 pace, just to let my legs sort of flush out any a bit of fatigue. Um, so I averaged the 6.33 minute per mile for the first one. The course itself was all gravel, pretty much, um, or like country roady, not country road, like country paths, um, obviously around the country park. Very twisty and turny, so not, not the fastest course at all. Um, so did a 6.20, then a 6.16, and then dropped down to a 6.26. I think that was probably where it was a lot more tighter turns and stuff, so you lose a bit of time. Then a 6.14 minute per mile, and then a 6.16 minute per mile, which gave me an average of 6.21 minute per mile. The course was like, I don't know, maybe, 0.2 miles short or something that came in at just under six miles with a time of 37 minutes and 40 seconds. So ran pretty strong. I think there was there was definitely an extra gear there if I needed it, but I didn't want to, same sort of thing with my last race because I was at the start of the race. I didn't want to push it too much and blow up and then have someone overtake me. So another win. I think I, the next guy was five minutes behind me. He was the guy that led the swim um, and he must have had the second fastest bike and run us, I think, the other day as well. Because yeah, he was really, really solid. Got a little trophy. K2 
Cambridge Sports Lake Triathlon Festival first open standard. Pretty cool. That was how the day went. Um, really cool to take a second win two weekends in a row. First place with a time of 2.11.33, Lewis Fordham. Yeah. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I think, like I say, there was potentially a little bit more there, but it is what it is, and you know, I still took the win, so I, I can't complain too much. But um, yeah, I wish I hadn't done the extra lap on the bike, uh, the swim as well. I really need to <laughs> learn to count on it. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please make sure you give it a like, um, comment any questions or stuff you, or thoughts you have down below. Uh, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you next time for some more triathlon-related content. Peace.